What's up, peeps? It's good to be here with you guys. Um, I just want to encourage you. I know there's a lot of crazy culture wars that, you know, conservative Christians would consider themselves in these days. And I think especially the issue of, you know, gay marriage, same-sex marriage, I know that's a big issue upon everyone's minds, upon liberals, upon conservatives, upon con uh, uh, people who are, you know, moderate. People are really thinking about these issues and, and, and some of the culture shifts that are happening. And you know what the Holy Spirit has showed me? Not to worry. Because one thing that I learned before I became a Christian, or as I became a Christian, as I look at my life before I became a Christian, is that sin is not sustainable. That's why when you think about some of the local political corruption and the financial Wall Street greed and, and all the, you know, the... The, 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 the lies that the mortgage companies were, were speaking and inflating prices and putting people into subprime loans and you think about uh, some of the local issues that happen in school districts and you know teachers molesting students uh, you think about you know presidents being impeached and, and, and uh, political figures mayors uh, I mean they got so much issues happening right now in Chicago uh, when you really think about sin sin is not sustainable. Sin meaning things that you do outside the will of God. Dishonoring your parents is not sustainable. Lying is not sustainable. Sex outside of marriage is not sustainable. Hetero marriage. It's just not. Um, walking around coveting and being jealous and, 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 and hating people, it's not sustainable. Practically, and I'm just speaking practically here right now, <laughs> it's not sustainable for a nation. Actors who do movies and they cross the line in sex scenes and then they wonder why their own marriages are on the line. Acting at any cost is not sustainable. You can make a point without having to actually have sex or get so close that you're basically having sex. I mean, but again, it's just people pushing the lines. It's sinners telling other sinners how to live. That's what our culture is. Our culture is a big bubble full of people all telling people how to live. Christianity is about a savior who comes from eternity into the bubble and shows us the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus broke through time and space. So this is the reality, you guys. The culture is going to move in a direction it's going to move. We need to focus on faithfulness. Faithfulness when it brings positive results and faithfulness when it brings negative results. That's what you see in the first century church in the apostolic example. All they were was faithful and Christianity spread like leaven. It penetrated the culture on every level. Roman uh, emperors came and went, the senates came and went, Roman culture came and went, uh, the Greco-Roman uh, practice of homosexuality came and went as a mainstream uh, behavior that was accepted. Many things have come and gone, but Jesus Christ and the foundation of Christianity remains. Even in the greatest persecutions, Judaism, the true Israel, remains. So the reality is this, that Jesus and his ethics are sustainable, and they're profitable, and they enhance not only your life here on earth, but they get us into the world to come. And when we get on that other side, called heaven, it is going to be a glorious thing. Paul said in Romans 8 that the sufferings of this world cannot compare with the glories to be revealed. What we need to do is keep the armor of God on in our lives. Focus on one thing. You know, just when you're in your time, when you're alone with the Lord, in your times with the Lord, just hear the Lord saying, be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful to the task I've given you. Be faithful. Stop looking at other people. Stop coveting what other people have. Trust me, everyone is struck suffering 
and the more power you have, the more wealth you have, the more you're suffering. God compensates everything, even disabilities He compensates. That's, that's the mystery of life. There are people who are deaf who are seeing things more clearly than you. So God compensates. He gives joy to the worker who works behind the scenes as a maintenance man, as a janitor, as an administrator, and, in, and, and he gives uh, uh, a different type of suffering to the person who's up front, and then he gives a certain type of suffering to the person who's behind the scenes and is making you know limited money, doesn't have a bunch of public notoriety, but guess what? There's compensation, just compensation, and, 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 and there's justice from the hand of God. Not fully, but one day fully to come in the world called heaven. We need to pray. We need to pray. And we need to understand that there's power in prayer. As we begin to pray for our culture and ask for God's Spirit to unleash revival and conviction and power in people's lives. So right now I want to close this word of encouragement concerning where our culture is and the way that God's going to move in the instability, in the unsustainableness of where people's lives are headed. Trust me, these aren't just stats, these aren't just news articles. Uh, the gay community are real people. Uh, the weed community are real people. The Wall Street community is real people. The gang communities are real people. The drug dealing drug import export communities are real people and their lifestyles are not sustainable only a life with Jesus is sustainable the living water that never dries up so let's pray and let's pray every day let's call out the cultural issues let's call out our president let's call out different communities and ask Jesus to bring them to the altar Jesus we just want to pray right now that you would bring revival to our culture, to our president, to his wife, to our Senate, to our Supreme Court, to our Congress, to our cities, to the nations of the earth, to Miami, and that, Lord, you would bring conviction and fire and passion, and that you would disarm the powers of the enemy. You'd bring conviction upon the hearts of people that they would understand how desperately they need Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would break through all the lies and all the darkness and all the deception and let people understand and see clearly who Jesus is and what he came to do for them. Holy Spirit, fall. Break the yoke of the enemy. Destroy the powers of Satan. And let people come into transforming salvation and the born-again experience in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're not born again, I encourage you to give your life to Jesus. To become a Christian. To leave the lifestyle you're living to leave the practices and the ideas that men and women are propagating in rebellion towards God because you know how miserable and empty and painful your choices have been. And these choices bring hell into your life and ultimately will end you up in hell. But Jesus loves you. And there's a better way. Become a Christian. Join a local church. Get baptized. And begin to live the life of a Christian. Walk with Jesus. And you will not regret it in this life and in the life to come. God bless you.